Today we're going to be talking about antipsychotics. So, antipsychotics, the main principle behind them is dopamine antagonism. And we, there are three main pathways that utilize dopamine that we need to understand to not only understand why it works as an antipsychotic, but also to understand the side effects of them. So, there are three main pathways that are relevant. So, there's the mesolimbic mesocortical pathway, which is this one with the, nucle the, the nucleus accumbens and the prefrontal cortex, which starts at the VTA. Uh, this stuff is less important, but it's important to know what the uh, effects are. So, overactivation of this pathway will result in the symptoms of schizophrenia. Notably, behavioral changes, psychosis, and changes in affect. They're categorized into positive, negative, and cognitive symptoms, which we'll go into a bit more depth in a bit. There's also the nigrostriatal pathway, which is to do with movement. And you might remember it from Parkinson's, where inhibition of it leads to basically drug-induced Parkinsonism. Because in Parkinson's disease, we have destruction of the... Um, of the substantia nigra, and equally, we can ha mimic the same effect, causing rigidity and bradykinesia by inhibiting this pathway. The third one is the tuberal hypophyseal pathway, which is from the hypothalamus to the pituitary, and dopamine release will inhibit prolactin secretion. So by blocking this pathway, we, we end up with hyperprolactinemia, which leads to things like galacteria, uh, amenorrhea and gynecomastia. Okay, so broadly, there are three pathways that we can affect with dopamine antagonists. That's all this slide's really saying. At, for antipsychotics, we want to use this to have an effect on symptoms. The, the, okay, so the, we categorize antipsychotics into classical and atypical antipsychotics. Classical is like the first gen, atypical is like second gen. Um, for classical, you have clopromazine and haloperidol. The effect that they have is that uh, they improve positive symptoms. So positive symptoms are symptoms that are added on. Negative symptoms are uh, symptoms or things that are taken away. And cognitive symptoms re refer to stuff like executive function and memory. So positive symptoms are things like hallucinations and delusions. So we find that in classical antipsychotics, it only really improves positive symptoms. Negative symptoms like emotional blunting and changes in affect isn't actually, or social withdrawal, for example, isn't, um, there's no effect on them, all cognitive symptoms. All right, so let's have a look at this table for side effects and stuff. Clopromazine and haloperidol work both on D2, but clopromazine also works on a bunch of other receptors. We have alpha-1, histamine, muscarinic receptors, and serotonin, or 5-HT2 receptors. All right. We know that inhibiting this nigrostriatal pathway leads to drug-induced Parkinsonism. However, by inhibiting muscarinic receptors through muscarinic antagonism, we actually uh, oppose the Parkinsonism symptoms and we oppose what we call extrapyramidal symptoms or just involuntary movements. Typically the extrapyramidal symptoms are things like facial twitching, grimacing, lip smacking and things like that. Therefore, clotpromazine is actually pretty good for if the if we have someone who t goes on haloperidol but they experience a lot of um, extra permanent symptoms, it's worthwhile to think about something like chlorpromazine. Okay, um, for D two blockade, the side effects therefore for chlorpromazine is just going to be the hyperprolactinemia because of this over here. We're going to treat the schizophrenia. We're going to uh, inhibit, we're going to cause Parkinsonism, but also fix Parkinsonism with this stuff. And we're going to end up with hyperprolactinemia, which is these three symptoms here. 
cool. Moving on to, let's talk about the effects of all of the other receptors. So alpha one is a sympathetic, it's like a receptor in the sympathetic system and antagonism would cause vasodilation and hence we're thinking about postural hypotension. Histamine antagonism causes sedation and muscarinic, which is in the parasympathetic system, by inhibiting it, we're increasing sympathetic activity. Uh, so you're gonna cause things like a dry mouth, blood vision and constipation. So for chlorpromazine, we're gonna have these symptoms that are bolded here. And we're also gonna have a couple of other ones which are multifactorial, but also seem to hap like seem to happen seem to happen in these uh, classical antipsychotics, which is weight gain. There's an increase in metabolic disease, or just which leads to just an increase in cardiovascular disease. This should not be an A. This is meant to be a D. And tardive dyskinesia, which is which refers to a sort of movement pattern that occurs due to long-term use, and it's it's seen as a long-term complication or a side effect, long-term side effect. Uh, Haloperidol will have just these symptoms, but the Parkinsonism is bad, that we would actually consider this as well. Okay, atypical Gen 2 antipsychotics. There are three. There's risperidone, olanzapine, and quetiapine. We target every one of these receptors. Now, the miracle part about these drugs is that it improves both positive and negative and also works sometimes on cognitive symptoms. This is really good. And the reason for this is due to the serotonin antagonism, which is much more marked than any other class. Uh, okay, so thinking about in schizophrenia, going back to our dopamine pathways, what we see is an overactivation of the nucleus accumbens and an underactivation of the prefrontal cortex. By, an, by inhibiting this pathway, we block the nucleus accumbens, which helps with our positive symptoms, but that doesn't help with our prefrontal cortex, which actually has less dopamine. So we actually, like, I don't know if it actually makes it worse, but we're definitely not helping it. The solution is, apparently, we have serotonin receptors, uh, which, when activated, inhibit dopamine release at the prefrontal cortex. Uh, it is to note that in the nucleus accumbens, it's D2 antagonism, and in prefrontal is D1. So, uh, yeah. In this case, we inhibit serotonin receptors, which promotes dopamine at these prefrontal cortex D1 receptors thereby improving negative symptoms and also helping out with cognitive symptoms as well. Uh, okay. So here's a more comprehensive list of side effects. The only thing to note here is that, and the only difference is that um, we don't get extrapyramidal symptoms and Parkinsonism is much less because of this stuff. Oh, sorry, because uh, of this stuff. Um, and it, you should also know that clozapine is another anti, atypical antipsychotic, which does, which has this unique um, side effect of causing agranulocytosis, which means the lack of granulocytes, which are three main cells, which is neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. But since our blood is mainly made up of neutrophils, we see it as mainly as neutropenia. And that is all there is to it. Thanks for watching.